All right, so here's our And I'm not swallowing it. I'm just kind of chewing it up. To see if it's got a peppery taste. And I was told by a mushroom expert from Sweden today that as long as you don't swallow the flesh, you're not going to get poisoned even from a poisonous mushroom. But I'm real confident this one's not poisoned anyway. Not really tasting the peppery taste, but I like pepper a lot. And I just spit a dip out so that I could have something to do with it, to be honest with you. But I'm pretty convinced that this is exactly that. It's that crowned coil mushroom, coral mushroom. And there's quite a bit of it in this area. So again, I'm pretty convinced this would be an edible type mushroom. And if it's got a peppery flavor to it, it would be good for seasoning soups and things like that. So this is what I'm doing right now is I'm making an intense study of mushrooms. I'm going to go to Sweden for two weeks. I'm going to be with a mushroom expert over there for part of the time. I also met an expert from Sweden online today who is willing to train me the next time I go to Sweden who lives near Stockholm. So I'm going to take advantage of that as well. I'm also going to pick his brain quite a bit online as I'm identifying these different types of mushrooms. But again, this is one of those mushrooms that doesn't have a poison lookalike and it is very easy to identify. And that's why I like it. I try to stay away from anything that could be poison or has poison lookalikes, just like in the plant world. That way I know when I grab it, at least it's not going to poison me. It may not be the best tasting thing in the world. And that you're only going to know by putting it in your mouth. But it's not going to be poison. Afternoon, guys. Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I started this video off with a little bit of a vlog on some crowned coral type mushroom walking down the trail. I've come up into an area where there's a few beech trees. I'm actually looking for some black trumpets. Don't know that I'm going to find them. But a good indicator is right behind me here. I don't know if you can see them in the camera, but there's some chanterelles back there. And there's some big beech trees right in this area. So that's a good bet that there could be some black trumpets in this area. But while I was doing that, of course, I'm always looking for new things to try and take back to identify picture-wise, like we discussed yesterday. And I found this mushroom and I've seen quite a few of these today while I've been out and it's a gilled mushroom you can see looking at it but it's not extruding any of the latex like the one we looked at yesterday I have positively identified the one from yesterday as well as an edible mushroom but not necessarily palatable mushroom and there's a difference there just because it's not poison you can eat it doesn't necessarily make it palatable so I went through the description on this and I found a gray almond waxy cap here in the book. And I read the description and it talks about how the gills are tightly spaced to loosely spaced. It talks about the sunken cap. It talks about a bumpy feeling on the top and it talks about it being sticky and it is sticky when you touch it. So all of those things lead me to believe that's what it is. And it says it's an edible mushroom. Now it says it's also fragrant and I'm smelling it. And it's a very fragrant mushroom. It smells almost flower like so I'd say it's a pretty good bet that we're onto something here I've taken several photographs of this mushroom to take back with me to do the usual steps that I talked about yesterday and since yesterday I've also met another mycologist from Sweden who I've talked to quite a bit and he's also verified a few of my things that I was unsure about that I've identified out here that I was kind of unsure whether I got the right one or not it's really weird sometimes because there's a lot of missing information out there on some of these mushrooms and some of them are very difficult to identify but i'm pretty sure i'm onto something here so i'm going to bump him when i get back home after i hunt a few more mushrooms up and we're going to talk about a couple more species that i found out here that i've positively identified and kind of just show you what they look like um, that are species that are very difficult to confuse with something else i would not consider this a species that was difficult to confuse with something else i would consider that more of an advanced situation there but things like the chanterelles we talked about yesterday very hard to mistake them for something else so those are where we want to start off as far as beginning with edible mushrooms and things like that and again a lot of this just boils down to this is my food bank you know long-term thinking self-reliance thinking if i find large beds of these different types of mushrooms they're going to be there every year they're the fruit of the mycelium like we talked about yesterday so they're going to be there every year 
So if I find these larger beds of certain types of mushrooms that I know are edible, like these chanterelles and things like that, I can go back there year after year, harvest, take them home, dry them, eat some fresh, dry the rest, rehydrate them later, use them for soup stocks, use them for soups, use them with meats and things like that after they're rehydrated. So you're giving yourself a supermarket in the wild that you understand where it's at, what time of year it's there, and you can go back after it again and again and again. We should also talk real quick before we move on to something else. A couple of things that I didn't mention yesterday. You get in a hurry when you're shooting video sometimes and you forget things. And a couple of guys reminded me of some of the things that I missed. When you are recording your findings of a mushroom to go back and try to identify it later. Other things that you want to understand are what does it smell like? If you cut it open, does it turn color? Does it stain a certain color? What kind of trees was it found around? What kind of environment was it found in? What time of year was it found in? All those types of things are important bits of information to write down to help you more positively identify the mushroom correctly. All right, guys, so we're out here in an area of pine now, up in an area of white pine replant. And this mushroom here is called Old Man of the Woods. And this one's pretty far past it. This is not edible anymore. It's pretty much done. We'll see if we can find a better example for you. But it's another one of those mushrooms that is very much identifiable or not mistakable for something else. I want to show you a better example of it if I can. But this would be one of the top 10 that I would say you'd want to start off with in identifying edible mushrooms. It's in the Bole family. It's called Old Man of the Woods. Okay, here's one that I have fully identified now. This is a purple gill mushroom is what I call it. We'll talk about where this is at in the book and the characteristics of this mushroom real quick. Again, pretty unmistakable with those purple gills. Lots of these in the pine forest. Okay, so let's talk about this purple gilled mushroom real quick so we can discuss identification. Now, I've already verified this mushroom through a couple different sources, including my buddy that's a mycologist in Sweden. The picture that's in the Audubon Society Guide book does not look very much like the species that's here. But when you find that picture, which has got purple gills, and you look up the purple gilled Lacaria right here, and you read the description, first of all, you look at the picture and it shows it's got an offset club-shaped stem on it, which this one has, right? Then it goes on to talk about it and it says that it is convex, becoming flat, sometimes upturned, sometimes wavy, dry, and purplish and brownish. Now I have, as well as faded to green, gray and white. Now, I will tell you that with this mushroom, I spent an inordinate amount of time identifying this one because I found this one several days ago. I spent three days messing with this in different parts of the environment out here in the wildlife area. In the pines is where I've always found this. And I looked at several species, several of these specimens in different stages of their life cycle before I was sure what I had because I, I was nervous about it. Gilled mushrooms make me nervous. And at any rate, the gills are attached and distant, broad, thick, and purplish. So we've got that. If you look in there, you've got thick, widely spaced purple gills in there. Fibrous, rigid, gray-white stalk, purplish to brownish tones. It's got a purplish tone to the stalk. If you look at it, the stalk has a purplish tone to it in the right light. It season is July to November. Grassy areas open oak woods. It says here, now there are oaks in this woods, but this is mainly pine. And there are oak in the other woods I found it in, but again, it was mainly replant pine. Again, this is a replant area of this Virginia pine, but it predominantly was a hardwood forest to begin with. So I kind of have to set that aside. East of the Great Plains, pretty much that's all you got. This large fleshy, is fleshy lacaria is often found in quantity in the fall and is good when mixed with other foods. So it's not something that is, you know, going to be tasting fantastic all by itself, but it's good when you mix it with other foods, especially soup stocks and things like that, I've been told. And so it's important to understand this again, because this is your grocery store. If you can find these in quantity, and I know a place where there's probably 50 of these right now growing in a pine area like this we're in right now, where this is a single one, 
There's about 50 of them in that area. If you understand those areas and you know them in your head, then you've got that supermarket you can just go to when the time is right and get what you need, take them back, dry them, cook them, whatever you're gonna do with them. So anyway, just a little bit more on how I go about identifying some of these mushrooms. I'm gonna go ahead and break this one open for you. We'll split this thing down so you can kind of see what it looks like cut in half. Again, staining is important. If it tells you that that mushroom is supposed to stain when it's cut, you want to note that, but you can see those purple gills in there now. And it is not staining. It doesn't say anything about it staining in the book. So that's another good indicator. All right. Let's move on and find us some more old man of the woods. Okay, so here's a couple of small old man of the woods. This one right here is probably in the best shape. Pull him out of here and look. You can see it hasn't turned black on the inside yet. This is in the Bole family as well, or Bolet family, however you choose to pronounce it. But this is considered a choice edible mushroom. And again, it's not very hard to misidentify this. A couple, here's another one still really in good shape. Not too hard to misidentify that thing. It's pretty much black and it's furry feeling. It's got like hair on it. It's not difficult to figure this one out. And the picture in the book, I'm gonna show you real quick, is close to a dead ringer for this thing. So it's really easy with the book as well. You could just turn this to the bole section. You get into the section with the bolets in it. There it is. And here it is, bolets and others. And right there he is. Old man of the woods. Pretty hard to not or to misidentify that mushroom. That's another good one. All right, guys, well, we're headed out. We've seen a little bit today. And again, this is just a secondary part. And, you know, the way I go about learning mushrooms and fungi, both edible and medicinal, because they have both properties depending on the species that you find or choose to harvest. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our business, for our family, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And one last time, let me just say, don't consume a wild mushroom that you haven't been able to fully identify. Cross-reference it with field guides as well as two to three other sources that you trust. I'll see you guys in the next video.